Hi, I'm Dan Murphy, and I am here with a preview of the spring events put on by Dover Parks and Rec. So I'm here with someone from Parks and Rec, and uh, why don't you introduce yourself? All right. Uh, my name is Nicole DeChico. I'm the uh, new assistant director of Dover Parks and Recreation. Uh, I began just in September, and um, been planning some really exciting spring and summer programming for the town. Okay, so uh, so what do we have in store uh, for the upcoming months? Uh, for spring in particular, we have some big events coming up. Um, in a couple of weeks, we have our annual egg hunt, uh, followed by an opening day with Coach Pete, which everyone in Dover is a big fan of our Coach Pete sports programming. Uh, we also have our annual fishing derby. It'll be the 31st annual fishing derby, and that's held at Channing Pond. Um, and then that will be primarily all for April. And then come May, we'll have a field hockey clinic, um, and that's new for this year. <laughs> yeah, um, so how do, how do people go about uh, registering for these events? Uh, they can go on to doverrec.com, and that will have a link to our online registration. It'll bring them right to where they need to go. They can select from the left-hand side. Uh, there's a menu of all of the different programming for spring, summer, and even a few for fall of 2018. We're really jumping ahead here. <laughs> um, but there's all of the information that they'll need is there with ages and program descriptions, prices. OK. Uh, and so generally, uh, how, how much do these uh, programs run to, uh, how much does it cost to attend one of these programs? It's really varied. Mostly for our events that we have, they are typically free for the, the town. Uh, anyone can come and participate with some projects and fun activities for everyone, for the family. Uh, and then for the fishing derby, for instance, it's $10 because you're paying for bait and supplies and prizes. But then our programs can be anywhere from 45 to $200, depending on how many times per week they meet, uh, different supplies and things that are provided for each uh, activity, and things like that. OK. Uh, and so I mean, obviously, there are the one-time events, but mm -hmm. uh, some of the like weekly programs or you know, things that run. Uh, how long do they typically run? We have, uh, for programs like our hip hop and musical theater programs, those will be 10 weeks. Uh, Coach Pete programs are also 10 weeks. Um, other programs will typically be between six and eight. Those are the longer ones, though. Okay, and, and uh, so do people kind of pay per week, or do they a sort of pay a, the whole thing, or is there ways of working that if you can't attend one week or something like that? Uh, typically, it'll be a price for the entire session, mm -hmm. uh, and the, like I said, the price will be dependent on how many weeks it is. Uh, we do have some options, vacation weeks and the like, that are, you can pay for a full week or you could pay daily. Um, and in the summertime, our programs, you can pay individual weeks um, when you needed to go. But in the spring, it's uh, sessions that you're buying. Right. So you're paying for the whole session, uh, but it's definitely a bargain compared <laughs> to most of the other recreational activities around in the private sector. Yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> and I think that you guys typically put on great events, and uh, we can Thank talk you. somewhat about um, the uh, uh, attendance numbers in case people are interested in that potentially. Um, like, how many people typically show up to, uh, like, say, the, the how many people are you anticipating to show up at the egg hunt um, in a few weeks? Unfortunately, with the snow, it may be lower <laughs> than in previous years, uh, but it's a packed event normally yeah. so we will get uh, 200 individuals coming and searching for the eggs uh, fishing derby is very similar mm -hmm. uh, because they're such they're so built into the community uh, there's a big buzz surrounding them every year and everyone gets really excited to go and that's why we get really large numbers for our other programs typically 20 participants is average mm -hmm. um, that's normally where we'll max out and it could be below sometimes we'll s slip in a few extras when people want to come in mm -hmm. um, but that's the average for most of the programs I'd say between like 15 to 20 okay um, and then getting back to the egg hunt are yeah. there plans in place for this uh, weather potentially <laughs> <laughs> uh. so uh, it's it's included in all of the arrangements when they're, when they're looking into the information. We've been promoting it as, since it's the end of March, and you never know in New England, uh, the outdoor location is at Town Hall. It's out in the Common. Uh, if we do need to go inside, it'll be right in our building in the Carroll Community Center. 
and we will hide eggs all through the building. <laughs> and it will just sort of be a free-for-all <laughs> with some crafts happening in the carol room upstairs. Okay, that, that'll be great um, for, for all the kids. Um, and so then, and let's move on to the, the fishing derby. Uh, mm -hmm. You mentioned there were prizes. Um, oh, yes. So uh, maybe talk a little bit about that. Uh, so uh, the way that it works, we break down into different age groups. So each age group will have prizes for largest fish one and things of the like. Uh, we'll also have a raffle available, so we'll just give away prizes throughout where they're sort of, you know, picking names at random so it's not all based on what they catch because sometimes you don't catch anything when you're fishing and that keeps it fun for all of the age groups. Uh, and the prizes go, you know, they'll be tackle boxes, small tackle boxes, rods, lures, things like that. <laughs> yeah, uh, things related back to, of to fishing, of course. <laughs> uh, so uh, do we want to talk more specifically about some of the other uh, weekly programs as well? Uh, sure. Uh, so we have lots of sports programs that uh, we have baseball, soccer, t-ball, um, those are all Coach Pete programs. He does most of our sports and they're for the younger age group. Once they get to around kindergarten or first grade, there's a lot of organizations in town that are independent volunteer run, uh, like DS Soccer and Baseball. Uh, mm -hmm. So we typically will aim more towards the younger crowd and sort of introduce them to a sport, uh, show them sportsmanship and teamwork and just the basics skills of the game uh, and it's more of a fun learning environment and that way when the kids are moving on to other sports they, s they know what they like already. Mm -hmm. um, we also like I mentioned uh, hip-hop which yeah. is a really fun dancing exercise type class mm -hmm. that's very popular. We've had to increase the number of participants uh, that it's open to every time we've offered it because it's had such a draw uh, they're just dancing for an hour straight <laughs> uh, once a week and uh, it's been really fantastic. They put on a show at the end of their session um, and that's for a full elementary age range, so mm -hmm. 5 to 10 and that age is also the same for our theater program. So uh, for the theater program it can be challenging for the younger kids with reading because they'll be reading a script so there's a lot of music that comes into it. So they just learn words to the songs. But again, five to 10 year olds is our range for a lot of our programs for art and uh, theater, dancing, and for sports, it's younger. Okay, um, and then where, where, are the, uh, where are the sports programs held and then where are these other uh, the, these arts programs held? Yeah. Um, all of our indoor programming will be held at the Carroll Community Center, which is where our office is located. There's lots of space in there that's available to us, so we sort of take advantage of that as much as we can, and we really, we're filling that building up, so wherever there's a room, we, we pop in there. Um, and for the sports in the springtime, we'll be out at Chickering Field, at the school, the lower fields, and also uh, the Carroll Park fields. Okay, um, and then uh, I mean I think uh, that's that's roughly it. Unless there's anything else you want to add, um, maybe maybe mm -hmm. add uh, ways that people can contact you, and of course mention uh, the website where most of this registration comes. Yeah, uh, again. Uh, most of our registrations go through our online registration. Uh, yeah. People are always welcome to come in to the office or mail uh, their registrations into our office mm -hmm. at Four Springdale Avenue, the Carroll Community Center mm -hmm. here in Dover. Uh, but the online registration will be primarily the best way to see everything that's there uh, and you can pay by credit card that way. In the office we can only take cash and check. Uh, it's a dated process <laughs> but that's the way it works. works. Uh, and uh, so they can go on www.doverec.com. They can also s visit us on Facebook and Twitter at, um, at Doverec. And, um, and I'm sure there's contact information for you and for uh, yes. all the people working at uh, Parks and Rec uh, on those websites as well, right? It's all there, yes. yes. <laughs> well, uh, thank you so much. Um, and, uh, you know, I, if this is something that appeals to you, uh, please check out those programs. Thank you again. Thanks. Nice to meet you.